Hey, it's Joe from The Automator, and you're about to watch a video here where we walk through just a concept Isaias was outlining, and I was on a call with Jean, Alon, and, and Isaias, and, and I said, hey, 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 Isaias, hold on a second, let me hit record. So there's no intro, right? We just jumped right into it. I thought I'd just do a little setup here. It's on how to use a com object and how to register it and be able to send multiple parameters to a com object, which it just allows a lot more functionality than years ago. John Lott, I'll try to put it in the links here, a link to the, the webinar where he demonstrates his approach where you can pass parameters to each other. It's lightning fast, but you basically you can pass one thing to it. And in the concept that Isaiah is talking through, it allows you much more flexibility. It allows you to have methods and, you know, actually have full access to that com object. So I thought I'd just uh, throw it up here real quickly. Later on, Isaiah will ask him to make an actual example of it because we had an idea of how to use it. And I uh, just thought you'd enjoy it. Thank you. Cheers. All right, start again. <laughs> okay, so in AutoHotKey, you know that you can create a class, right? Which can be instantiated into an object later on, right? Now, that class, you can actually call a function. And I don't know, um, we saw it a few days ago, Joe, that it was register active object. So it was um, Jackie was using that function. Now, if to that function, you pass that class, that class is created as a com object now that all applications, independent of the language they're in, they could access that class. Interesting. Now, the interesting thing about that is that I could create a script that registers that object, right? And now, when you send files, like when you select three files and send them, I connect to that object and in a variable, I just append them, append the three files into a variable. And now my main script, when it checks that that object has changed, then goes ahead and reads the three files, process them, and then clears the variable. So I could mm -hmm. use that object to communicate between the two. But the object is what you would put here, let's just return to the parameter you have to give here to the registry. Right. So here I would just call a script that will connect to the object and append the things into the object. That's it. That's but the this, only thing it does. This, but this object will be called three times if you have to Right. Read. And every time it calls, so, so, so the script, the only thing that does is that it connects to the active object and appends the file into the variable. Okay. It appends it. So if it was the first time, it has one. The second time, it appends the second one. The third time, it appends the third one. And my main script, every, I don't know, second or every five seconds, checks to see if that variable contains files. And if it does, then it would just go ahead and, you know, uh, yeah. do whatever. Or there would be a, right, exactly. a, if after one second, there is no more file, so it's finished. Then it, it clears it. Like the, after I process it, after I process the files, then I clear the variable is empty. And now my script is not going to do anything with that anymore because, but, but basically this active object is a very effective way for two scripts to communicate because sending message as you're doing, you can only send one message at a time with yeah. one parameter at a time. But if I can connect to an active object, I could have an object that has methods and classes and it, it, it can have everything that an object can have. So it can have variables, methods and stuff. Mm -hmm. And any script can connect to it and execute an action from that class, whatever it is, which is uh, awesome, actually. I, I believe I understand everything you're saying. You're saying, but you have to see it in action. You know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to seeing the example you Right, can right. So we will create a little bit of example, yeah. It, but um, yeah, I need to see an example of it. Too. Right, right, right. It, it is a very interesting concept that came to mind when Jackie showed me that. Right. And I was like, yeah, I know that. I have never actually found a use for it. But mm -hmm. he was using it for his two scripts to connect with each other. Which so, is why we talk a lot of how important it is to look at other people's stuff and say, right. be able to say, wait a minute, what what are you doing with that? In, like, in you know? his in his case, it was he has one script that is always looping, always. And if it finds something, it sets a variable in it's that active a server, script. Then. Right. Yeah, it, it well, it is it is actually checking the screen for something. Uh -huh. If whatever it's looking for is found, it connects to that active object and sets a variable in it. Okay. Now the main script is certain every certain time connecting to the active object. And if it finds that variable, it does something. 
so so the two scripts are connecting to the same active object mm -hmm. in memory that's what's going on yeah which Instead is also awesome. messaging from one to one exactly one many or many to one right yeah. the, the point in here is that now you have a very big class if you want that can have many variables that you can send more complex messages because uh, with your approach you can send one message with one parameter which is usually either a string or a or a thing but when you have an, an object you can send everything you want you can actually send a, a complete mm -hmm. <laughs> set of yeah. instructions with your object so it's great it's actually interesting yeah, Good. yeah. Awesome. okay so thank you very much